Transform Your Self-Talk, The Art of Talking to Yourself for Confidence, Belief, and Calm. Written by Nick Trenton, narrated by Russell Newton. Mindlessly saying a mantra into a mirror each morning when you don't really believe it is unlikely to have much effect. But by this point in the book, you've hopefully zoomed in on those alternative thoughts and core beliefs that directly challenge the negative self-talk that is unique to you in your life. Starting each morning with a deliberately positive session of self-talk sets the tone and intention for the rest of the day. It's making a commitment to yourself to frame the rest of the day positively with you set up as your own best friend and supporter. The words you speak to yourself inside your head have a way of extending themselves outside your head and becoming real. You'll unconsciously use the same language out loud or when talking to others, which will in turn affect how they respond to you. Start the day on a life-affirming, hopeful footing, and you'll not only find it's easier to be compassionate with yourself, but with others too. Negative thoughts lead to negative words and actions, and negativity toward other people that is likely to be reflected back to you. It seems like such a simple thing, but it makes all the difference in the world. Do you begin your day with gratitude and optimism, speaking kindly to those around you, and giving yourself the pep talk you need to get through the day's challenges? Or do you complain about everything that went wrong, assume the worst of those around you, find fault in everything, and predict disaster at every turn? It's all a choice, and good choices have a habit of breeding more good choices, This book is about the little words we say to ourselves in our minds, but it's about so much more than that. It's about our attitude to life itself, our entire mindset, our perspective on all our important relationships, and the engine that drives all the major decisions of our life. So, a cheesy mantra said without conviction is not enough. That said, affirmations and positive scripts can be an immensely powerful way to retrain a mind stuck in negative self-talk. Our mind doesn't innately know right from wrong. It believes what we feed into it. That's why positive affirmations work. Use your words for good. Regularly get some distance from yourself and your thoughts through meditation, journaling, or literally telling yourself, this is just a thought. Give your inner critic a name so you can say, oh, it's just Gertrude again. I can ignore her. The important lesson here is that your thoughts aren't you. They're simply words that may or may not be true. Practice thought stopping, or visualize putting useless self-talk in a box where it can't distract you. Then, actively replace these thoughts with ones you've consciously chosen as supportive and more realistic, i.e. mantras, affirmations, or scripts. These can seem a little glib and silly on the surface, but they really work. It doesn't really help to just copy inspiring messages you hear from others, as nice as they may be. You need to choose words that personally resonate and speak directly to your unique core messages. A good mantra can capture the essence of the attitude you want to emulate. Successful people often use mantras as positive personal mottos that they regularly rely on to boost their confidence and help them navigate adversity. For example, You've survived worse before. Halts catastrophic thinking. You tell yourself that even the worst outcome is something you are strong enough to deal with. You'll figure it out. Shifts you into a more practical, objective frame of mind and away from rumination. What matters most right now? Gets you out of obsessive thought loops and onto your values and goals. I choose my own experience empowers you to take charge of your ability to consciously rewrite your own script. I am of value, and I have purpose in this world. Affirms that you're a human being with real worth who deserves care and respect no matter what. Will this matter in six months? Puts things in perspective. The past is the past. What can I do now? Switches your focus to where it matters. Action in the present moment. There are always options. Takes you out of black and white, doom and gloom thinking, and into the realm of possibilities. You're doing your best. Well done. Self-affirmation that doesn't depend on outcome. Acknowledges the hard work you're doing. You rock. A little cheesy, 
but cuts to the chase. You have worth and are a valuable, lovable person, no matter what. I'm unique in the world, and nobody is like me. Reminds you not to make comparisons. Which path do you want to go down? We all have choices. This reminds you that you can always pour your energy and attention into what matters. Today, I choose peace, gratitude, and love for myself and others. Reasserts your values as an antidote to negativity and asserts your power to control your own inner reality. It's not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you get up. Refocuses your attention on learning and not getting bogged down in failure. When something doesn't go right or you're struggling, pulling out a mantra or affirmation is like giving yourself a leg up or having your own built-in guru who's on your side cheering you on. It can definitely feel cheesy, but why not put some of these affirmations somewhere prominent where you can see them every day? Remember, the more something is repeated, the more your brain believes it's real. A mantra or affirmation is a great way to cement positive self-talk and a healthy self-esteem, but there are other ways to support yourself too. It'd be a shame to nurture your self-esteem only to have it canceled out by unsupportive or hostile people or situations around you. As you practice affirming your own self-worth and working on your self-talk, you might more clearly notice the negative people in your life. You don't need to cut someone out of your life completely just because they had a bad day or ranted a little too much at your last meeting. Rather, it's about carefully noticing whether some people consistently affect your self-concept and self-talk in a negative way. The attitudes of people around you can greatly influence your own. Though good friends support one another through challenges, pay attention if you have friends or family members who seem to steadily complain without taking any action, bring others down, are abusive, or simply have an air of negativity around them that makes everyone feel bad. It can be hard to reduce your contact with such people, and it's not something to be done lightly. However, if you can see a regular and ongoing pattern of negativity that threatens your own efforts to maintain hope and optimism, it's time to set up a boundary. Limit time spent together, or cut it out entirely if possible. Your attitude to negative people who try to bring you down is not much different from your attitude to negative self-talk. Recognize it for what it is and proactively move away from it. Finally, keep a close eye on the media you consume. Do you spend ages online reading anxiety-inducing news articles? Do you waste hours on social media that only leaves you feeling worthless and out of the loop? Do you deliberately seek out information to confirm negative core beliefs? Think of the media and the internet in general as a person. What kind of relationship do you have? It may be time to choose more balanced, healthy media to consume, or step away from social media completely if you notice it eating away at your self-esteem. Can you find sources of information that inspire and encourage you rather than leave you feeling bad? A Self-Empowering Habit the more you practice positive self-talk and cultivate a healthy self-esteem, the more and more your attitude will seep out into the world at large, affecting every part of your life. You may start to realize that healthy self-talk is just one small aspect of a healthy lifestyle. It's not just about supporting your mental health, but your entire well-being. It's the little daily habits that accumulate and build a robust sense of confidence over time. It's the consistent effort and commitment to choosing the life you want that makes the difference. Self-talk is the ultimate habit in that it is something you're engaged with throughout the day, every day, for your entire life. But other habits can also weigh in on your overall self-concept and well-being. Gratitude The last thing your inner critic wants to do is appreciate the little things in life or notice how lovely the sunset looks right now. Gratitude seems like such a small thing, but it can be an incredibly powerful antidote to complaining, chronic anxiety, and dissatisfaction with the way things are, the essence of most negative self-talk. The effects are backed up by science. A 2013 paper in Psychology Today showed that young people who kept gratitude journals experienced more energy, determination, attention, 
and feelings of enthusiasm than those who didn't. Gratitude changes the brain's focus, boosting serotonin and dopamine levels and helping us feel more resilient in the face of challenges. A gratitude journal is a place where you can consciously write down the things you're grateful for. A great cup of coffee in the morning, your pet doing something cute, sunshine on your skin, a beautiful song, a hug from a friend. Big or small, note it down so your brain has something tangible to focus on. Aim for three to five things a day. You can always find a few things to be grateful for, no matter how tiny. Closely related to this habit of gratitude is the habit of avoiding comparison. Like complaining, comparing yourself to others only robs your life of joy and keeps you focused on the negative. When you compare yourself to someone else, you deliberately ignore all the unique, wonderful things that make you, you, while emphasizing perceived weakness and deficits that might not even be real. Concentrating on what you don't have is a game that goes nowhere. You might see someone else's life and be envious of their financial situation, their relationships or families, their health and appearance, their talent and achievements, and so on. But this is usually a distortion. You don't get to see inside that person's head to their self-talk, and you probably don't see their challenges, their fears, failures, shortcomings, or anxieties. What others present to the world is typically the highlights reel, all the best parts of their lives. What you don't see is what they're ashamed or unsure about, the hidden debt, the unhappy marriages, the mental health issues, and even the low self-esteem. You may be surprised to know that the person you admire and envy feels no better about themselves than you do and actively wishes they were someone else. Is there someone in the world who is objectively doing better than you? Of course. Does it matter? No. There are also very many people doing worse, and when you think about it, how can you really measure this better or worse anyway? The truth is that everyone's life is very, very different, and most people are doing their very best with the gifts and limitations they have. Ultimately, someone else's life doesn't imply a single thing about you and your own life. Try to adopt an attitude of compassion and kindness for everyone, even those annoying people who seem so perfect. Everyone is facing an uphill internal battle that we may not be aware of, and it's always advisable to be a positive influence on those around us. Practice taking joy in others' accomplishments. Compliment them and be happy for them, knowing that it will never undermine your own value. They're not better than you, but they may well have knowledge, attributes, and skills that you can learn from. Take inspiration from them and let them inspire you to work hard toward what you care about. At the same time, understand that everybody is on a unique path. Comparison is not only unhelpful, it's also impossible. Life is not a race or a competition. If you regularly find yourself comparing your life to others, ask what's really important to you and how you can bring those things to life. It's not your business what other people do, but it is your business what you do. Focus as much as you can on your own self-determined values, goals, and strengths, and you'll never feel threatened by anyone else doing the same. The Culmination of Rewriting Your Self-Talk In this book, we've covered a number of different activities, approaches, techniques, and methods to not only recognizing and understanding our self-talk, but actively rewriting the script and creating a better self-esteem. We've talked about the power of meditation, journaling, exercise, reframing and switching perspectives, thought-stopping techniques, relaxation methods, descripting, and more. But ultimately, all these activities point to one underlying aspect behind all these approaches, cultivating self-compassion. What's the difference between someone who has naturally high self-esteem and who regularly engages in positive self-talk and someone who doesn't? It's not that they've mastered any particular technique. Rather, it's that they love and respect themselves and conduct both their inner and outer worlds to reflect that deep belief. While the concept of high self-esteem was the focus of psychological research in the 80s and 90s, today, more and more attention is being paid to self-compassion and how it helps us reach our full potential beyond the old theories of high confidence. 
While the temporary boost that comes from comparing ourselves to others or putting others down can feel good, lasting feelings of self-worth derive from somewhere deeper. In the past, parents were encouraged to tell their children they could be anything they wanted and that they were special and different. But is that really true? And do we need to be special or different to deserve care, respect, and consideration? Praise and affirmation are great, but we need a sense of self that goes beyond this. We need to be able to remain solidly within our compassionate self-concept despite adversity, criticism, failure, or weaknesses. Anyone can feel great when complimented, but do you have a sense of self strong enough to remain sure of your value even if nobody else sees it and you aren't praised? The solution is not to evaluate yourself and give yourself a high rating, but not to evaluate yourself at all. No labels, no judgment, good or bad. Just acceptance of ourselves, exactly as we are right now. Many people unconsciously hold back on being kind to themselves because they believe that they haven't earned it, or that being too nice to themselves will make them lazy or selfish. Isn't that crazy when you really stop to think about it? What we could aim for is neither self-criticism, you're hideous, nor trying to prop ourselves up with false self-esteem. You're way better looking than him. But finding that calm, rational space in the middle, where we love and accept however we are in this moment. I look how I look. I accept that. I deserve love in any case. Self-compassion is deeper and more lasting than high confidence because it is not dependent on fleeting external factors. If I attach my self-worth to being wealthy or fit or clever, it means my self-worth will disappear if I lose my money, fall ill, or encounter someone more intelligent than I am. In other words, only internal self-determined worth is true worth. Self-compassion is not just something that sounds nice. It's backed up by solid research as a way to achieve greater well-being, contentment, emotional regulation, less anxiety and depression, and resilience. A 2008 paper by Neff and Vonk in the Journal of Personality showed that self-esteem and self-compassion are fundamentally different, and that self-compassion may surpass self-esteem in many ways. Perhaps best of all, being kind to ourselves makes it easier for us to be accepting of others, connecting mindfully with our common humanity. Practice gentleness, understanding, and kindness that doesn't depend on anything at all. Simply give them to yourself and others for free. Just like that. No ego needed. With self-compassion, you don't take things personally and seem to avoid some of the common pitfalls of overly high self-esteem. For example, narcissism, feeling disappointed by neutral feedback, feeling like a failure because you're average, or having a sense of self that yo-yos along with life's ups and downs. Self-compassion says that you are a human being and have intrinsic worth that has nothing to do with who approves of you, your actions, failures, fears, or anything else. It's unconditional. This means you're okay with who you are, warts and all, and embrace even your perfections rather than claim there aren't any or work intently to get rid of them. Self-compassion says, relax. Forget about asking whether you're good enough. You're alive, and you're okay exactly as you are. Open your heart. Let things be as they are, and you'll find it much, much easier to drop the habit of beating yourself up. An unexpected benefit of self-compassion is that it seems to remind us of a more universal sense of our interconnectivity, of our shared experience as human beings. It invites us to connect with something bigger than our tumultuous egos. With self-compassion, we paradoxically recognize the joy there is in serving others, and we develop a rich worldview that prioritizes the truly important things in life. Actually, being kind to yourself is harder than it seems at first, for some people almost impossible. We might find that being hard on ourselves has been so effective at pushing us to do better that we are afraid to lose our motivation by allowing ourselves to relax. 
but there's a good way to bootstrap yourself into more self-compassion. Imagine talking to yourself as you literally would to one of your dearest friends. This is because even those with the harshest self-talk can often summon up incredible depths of care and kindness for those they love. The trick is just to transfer it to themselves. How do you treat a friend who's feeling down, scared, nervous, or who has just made a mistake? You probably don't tell them they're a complete idiot and that nobody loves them. So, why do you do it to yourself? The first thing to do is drop the idea that self-compassion means you're being indulgent. The truth is that kindness, understanding, and empathy almost certainly make you a better employee, spouse, friend, and person in general. Once you realize that your inner critic isn't actually making you a better person, but instead undermining you, you're free to give yourself the support that will actually improve your life. Imagine a toddler who bursts into tears because they're frustrated they can't tie their shoelaces. You wouldn't laugh at them, tell them they were useless, or get angry that they were unhappy. You'd be patient, explain that they'd learn eventually, and that you still love them no matter what. Do the same for yourself, especially when you're in the middle of a tantrum and feel like you're failing. Use this approach every time you hear the voice of judgment and criticism emerging within you. Don't berate yourself for oversleeping. Instead, notice that you're not getting enough rest and choose to care enough about yourself to go to bed earlier that night. Don't agree with the rude person who insulted you on the bus. Put up a boundary and tell yourself, it's them, not me. Then forget about it. Don't psych yourself out with self-doubts as you write your resume, but look over your own shoulder and give yourself some encouragement. I know this is hard, but you're great. You're doing good work. When negative thoughts pop up, recognize that it's just the inner critic speaking, like a monster under the bed. If it has something useful to say, listen. But don't entertain any idea that damages your well-being or isn't true. Would you allow a random stranger to waltz up to a loved one on the street and tell them, you're worthless and you don't deserve to be here? Have the same reaction for yourself, even if you're the one who's being mean to you. A great exercise is to write out a job description for your inner critic. What is their main function in your life, really? And how do you go about doing that work? Do you let them? Is your inner critic keeping you safe, or are they limiting you? Are they supporting you or breaking you down? What effect do they have on your life? Are their words motivational, or do they do the opposite of inspire? Looking at your inner critic as a separate entity who is only doing their job gives you some distance and perspective on negative self-talk when it appears. How will you play manager to this employee? Just like it's a mosquito's job to occasionally bite you, you'll sometimes encounter negativity in your life, but that doesn't mean you have to accept it. Takeaways Previously, we discussed how to rewrite our internal monologue, but in this chapter, we focused on all the external factors that contribute to having healthier and more positive self-talk. There are everyday practices we can do to contribute to a more positive self-image, or just snap us into sharper awareness of our beliefs and narratives. Starting your morning with a dose of deliberately positive self-talk sets a pleasant tone for the rest of your day. While it may feel silly to feign positivity in the beginning, this technique really does work. The more we repeat something to ourselves, the likelier we are to start believing it. Remember neuroplasticity? By repeating positive statements that represent our desired goals throughout the day, we can easily boost our confidence and self-esteem in the face of adversity. Having said that, we are bound to struggle in remaining positive if those around us continue to be negative and judgmental. As we practice positive self-talk, we're more likely to notice the negativities of our friends and families. In such cases, we must set good boundaries to limit our interactions with negative people in our lives and even refrain from it altogether if required. Many of our habits, when cultivated properly, can help reinforce positive self-talk in our lives. For example, 
learning to be grateful is a great way to increase our overall happiness. Maintain a gratitude journal and update it daily with three to five things you are grateful for on that day as a way to count your blessings. Other productive habits include avoiding comparison with others, being kind in your interactions, and avoiding overly critical thought patterns. Another healthy habit we must develop is practicing self-compassion. This merely involves treating ourselves with more kindness and generosity. Too often, we are our own worst critics, but being compassionate to yourself is a tried and tested method for improving your self-esteem, happiness, and overall health. One easy way to do this is to talk to yourself as you would to a dear friend. We are generally much more accepting of our friend's mistakes than our own, and we must extend the same courtesy to ourselves. This has been Transform Your Self-Talk, The Art of Talking to Yourself for Confidence, Belief, and Calm. Written by Nick Trenton, narrated by Russell Newton. Copyright 2020 by Nick Trenton. Production copyright by Nick Trenton.